Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, I'm joined today by Drew Carrington from uh, One Inch Heroes. Hey everybody. Uh, and of course, I'm Dave. <laughs> Getting everything wrong. Thank you very much, Johnny, <laughs> getting the names in the correct place. Very much. Very good. Uh, yes, to, so today uh, Rick is uh, off in his office uh, organizing things for us to do later in the year. Uh, so we're, we brought Drew in. We're going to be painting some more Star Wars Legion miniatures. Uh, this is a pre recorded episode. Uh, so we won't have any uh, chat that we'll be dealing with, but um, you're very happy, uh, very welcome, sorry, to uh, comment on this video. So this will be going out on Thursday the 15th, I think, uh, and then that'll be followed by a live episode with myself and Rick. So Very good. Um, yes, I think I'll put this down then and reveal what we're painting. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Stormtroopers, loads and loads of stormtroopers. So we asked Drew to come in. Uh, because last Halloween we had a Space Marine painting competition. Ah, yes. Uh, where Drew didn't want to paint. Uh, let's send them around. There we go. <laughs> Drew didn't want to paint white because it was his sort of uh, bugbear. But of course, he ended up having to paint a white uh, Space Marine, one of the white scars. <laughs> A little and, bit of a uh, trial by fire, yeah, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did a brilliant job, uh, so brilliant that everybody voted his miniature the best, and not mine. <laughs> but uh, there's no bitterness there at all. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but we thought we'd uh, bring him back in, um, and we can work on the Stormtroopers here. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll get to it. Sounds uh, good. I'm going to use this brush. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yep, that's mine. <laughs> this was fun. That's great taste. Yeah. Uh, delightful. So, um, when I was preparing these mm. uh, Stormtroopers, I wasn't sure sort of how we were going to approach painting the white. Uh, I noticed that you've brought in every shade of gray that's available. Uh, pretty much from my collection, yeah. And, and some mixes and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we've got a lot, of a lot of opportunities to sort of mess around with things. But the... Uh, all the paint jobs on the Fantasy Flight miniatures are very clean mm -hmm. and very bright white. Yeah. Um, so I think we've got we've got a bit of flexibility in there. We can have a little bit of dirty white, that sort of sure, thing. Sure, sure. These have all been primed. Um, I'm going to sort of hold this one here under my close cam. Uh, okay, so I primed them all black first, uh, from the basically from the underside, and then hit them with the Zenithal prime of white, so from the top. It, just looks like white, but you can see some of the the shading under here. Mm -hmm. So we've got some opportunity to work in there with some of the, the lighter shades of gray. But uh, yeah, I don't think there's a lot that we're going to need to do. We can probably work through these pretty quickly. More than likely. I think that, uh, yeah, given the, the Zenithal highlighting, uh, takes, no. it takes a lot of the work out of it, yep. um, you know, especially for stormtroopers or guys that have white armor. Um, you know, because and not only that, but it gives a much more natural flow of color, so they look naturally highlighted from yep. you know the the planet with the twin suns, you know that they're fighting under. Right. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, one thing I will mention the uh, the white prime that I went through and did was uh, Corax white, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, from Games Workshop of Citadel, uh, and that's not a white, not a pure white. Uh, you can see it against the white of the thing there. It's a very light gray, so it gives us a, a point to go up a little bit further with our with our white, uh, which should be good. Alrighty, so should we jump in and get started? Sure, why not? I guess the um, one of the other questions that we've got as we're sort of getting started is uh, when we go in and paint the black, or should we paint the black first so we can do any correction that we need? To I tend to. Yeah. Um, I tend okay. to do. Uh, I tend to work with black uh, from the darkest color, you know, up because it's uh, it's a little easier to go back and correct, you know, if you spill over. Okay. Um, and you know, because you don't want to get all your your whites nice and clean. You don't want to get all the detail nice and done, and then you go back in with the black, and oops, you know, right over the right. edge, you go. Ugh, now I need <laughs> to get that blend again. You know. In that case, how about we work with uh, we work from that. All right, Sound good. sounds good. It's almost like a race because we're both working with. We've got two colors. Oh, I've got two colors here: black and white. <laughs> we're not even colors. <laughs> I have all the colors and the absence of color. So, let's get uh, stuck into that. Sounds good. 
So you're working on uh, one of the stormtroopers with what was the name of the gun again? I uh, believe it's a uh, a, a DLT nineteen blaster. So he's uh, he's got a very uh, heavy weapon. Right. When Drew came in and said, "I think this is the DLT heavy blaster," I was like. A DLT-19. I was like, really? You know all of those things? Uh, I have a Amazing. thoroughly uh, <laughs> endless vault of useless Star Wars knowledge. That's so. cool. That's super advantageous for us today. I think uh, I was reading on uh, some of the, the rule sets for this, uh, for yep. this miniature. Um, he's going to be particularly good at taking down uh, armor that's too strong for blasters. Oh. <laughs> Is it going to be? Is, do you think it's primarily an, like an anti-vehicle weapon, or is it? I think it'll be good for uh, light vehicles and heavy infantry. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. I wonder what kind of heavy infantry we can expect for the rebels. What do you think? I'm not entirely certain. Maybe if they have something like uh, heavier droid models. All right. Yep. Uh, something like that, uh, and I'm absolutely certain they will have. Uh, they will have some sort of. Uh, light walker or maybe like speeder bikes. Right. Uh, something yeah. that, uh, you know, a regular blaster could take down, but uh, this thing will do so quite handily. Right. A little bit quicker. Well, they've definitely got the, uh, the AT-RT, I think it's called. Which that's one the, is that? That's the, the, uh, the pers uh, basically the personal Right. Uh, the walker. little one. Yep. The, uh, while, while I do find it a very interesting uh, miniature and unit, um, yep. I will say that I, I do find it, uh, I, I don't see it as being as advantageous when there's uh, things like speeder bikes right. available. Okay. They just seem uh, like needlessly noisy as a, an infantry like a, uh, vehicle that's used for primarily scouting. Right. I okay. mean, on the other hand, yeah, the, the speeder bikes or swoops, uh, as they're called, are... You know, tend to be kind of loud. They have produced that high-pitched whine right. as they, they go off. Yeah. I think maybe the uh, the personal walkers might be, uh, I guess, better a little bit better for carrying their own sort of heavy weaponry. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm sure that they'll be. Uh, I'm sure they'll be outfitted with some kit that's particularly good at uh, destroying stormtroopers. Yep. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> you not so much. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, if the stormtroopers are my guys, then you know I'm right. probably uh, probably not looking forward to seeing them swept off the battlefield. These, uh... and I'm actually really looking forward to painting some more of these because I uh, I've already picked up a commission All right, uh, okay. for when the the game drops, and he has specifically requested uh, a unit of them be death troopers. Oh, okay. uh, in the the solid black glossy armor, right? Uh, From, and he is uh, uh, Rogue One, mm -hmm. right. and he has also requested a unit be magma troopers. So they'll be uh, they'll be a bright red All right. uh, okay. for their armor. They are uh, primarily deployed uh, in places where there's uh, lots of uh, fire right. and that sort of thing because their armor is a little bit more suited uh, okay. to the environment. So on planets like Mustafar. Okay. Where there's a lot of lava and a lot of uh, and a lot of you know, volcanic activity, that's right. where they tend to be garrisoned. Okay. So their armor includes some uh, like environmental filters and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So they're a little bit more suited to uh, to those sorts of dangerous climbs. Cool. That's neat. I guess there's, there's so many things that uh, the Fantasy Flight is going to be able to play with. Um, so many different models that they're going to be able to bring out mm -hmm. for the range. Um, oh, yeah, that's something I didn't mention before, for those of you who don't know. Star Wars Legion is being produced by Fantasy Flight Games. And should just I think it's just uh, from when this airs, it'll be a week before everything, uh, or the Wave 1 drops in the stores. Very so cool. So head to your local, uh, friendly local gaming store and place your pre-orders now. I think the core box set is uh, eighty nine ninety five, eighty nine ninety nine, in the ninety dollar range, which is pretty yeah. cool for. Uh, and there's thirty five miniatures in there. Yeah, it includes both of these um, 
units of stormtroopers. Yep. I believe so. It comes That's with right. all of uh, all of these guys that you see here that we're working on, yep. uh, and an equal number of uh, rebels. Yeah. And uh, I think they are uh, outfitted in the the uniforms that you see during the uh, the um, Battle of Yavin Four when they're on uh, on okay. Endor. Right. Yep. Exactly. We're uh, the ones that we're painting. We're doing uh, with a little bit of a sort of a uh, desert sort of bent. Very cool. Uh, so less sort of greenish tones. The more uh, sort of desert yellow, more khakis, kind of feel. yeah, that kind of kind of approach. Very cool. I think we're gonna look at the uh, stormtroopers here. Wow, there is just so much white. So much white. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot seem to escape it on this show. <laughs> just, we're gonna That's we're gonna paint white miniatures. <laughs> Quick, grab Drew. That's the secret, isn't it? You just keep calling me in for that uh, for that one task. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Now, ready up. That's what we're gonna do. Now on the miniature, there's a the sort of the low brow ridge that runs across the mm -hmm. top of the helmet. Uh, so you can just see it here. Um, I'm going to. Yeah, there we go. Hold, try and hold that still. So I'm gonna, gonna paint the black line just across the top of that. Mm. Is that how they? Yeah. Oh yeah, they do. I think they they're just adding a little bit more black in as well. Gotcha. So. I'm glad we're doing it this way first because there are, have been a few <laughs> a few places here where I've done a little oops. Yep. Touch that over, but I think in general that's pretty good. I've also found a uh, a very handy way of. You know, by doing this, it's uh, very handy to cheat when you go back and clean up because then you can just use your final highlights right, on your white to hit the edges, <laughs> and then you just go over with the brightest white over the over the black. Yep. And problem solved. Over the oops. That sounds good. Nice plan. <laughs> so, question: Should I hit and get another guy to couple at once, or? I like badge painting. Yeah. I mean, for the show now, I think we could do that. We'll get another one. I might actually grab with the commander here. Oh, nice. Because I'm going to enjoy coming back and painting his uh, sort of little command. Right. Uh, what would you call that? His uh, command pauldron. Pauldron, yep. His, Let's uh, go with the pauldron. It's kind of like yep. a big fancy epaulet. Yeah. I was going to say command epaulet, but... Uh, mm. Let's go with pauldron. It's a bit too big to be an epaulet. But uh, yeah, so one of the other things that's uh, really cool about these is that most of their webbing, the um, pouches and their uh, belts are also white. It's that bright white, um, sort of shiny white kind of look. So. We don't even have to worry about <laughs> leather pouches, which is nice. Well, thank goodness the Empire was uh, quite so uniform. <laughs> In their uniform. Yeah. It was funny, when, uh, on Tuesday we were talking about uh, gaiters that the, uh, that the rebel troopers are wearing. Mm -hmm. So uh, around their calves and ankles, sort of over there. Boots or uh, possibly shoes, right. wearing, which was a very um, sort of World War One, World War Two kind of look mm -hmm. for uh, a lot of armies. Now, obviously, the uh, stormtroopers were uh, quite a bit of their look was inspired by uh, the German soldiers, German uniforms, as their uh, helmets are have very very much the sort of Stahl helm, the steel helm, right. Look. Um, well, and they were also influenced, because um, Lucas was actually very heavily influenced by, um, uh, uh, who was the, um, he was a Japanese filmmaker. Kurosawa? Um, yeah, Kurosawa, and uh, so the helmets 
uh, are actually very similar to the style that uh, samurai All right. yep. would wear, where they're kind of belled out at the back, yep. uh, and they have the faceplate right, uh, yep. that you know, looks kind of like a scowl uh, yep. or a demon, um, and that's actually where uh, Darth Vader gets right. his signature look from. Yep. So he wanted him to look like a like an ancient warrior. It's absolutely true. And uh, one of the things I noticed was that the, the DLT-19, is that right? Mm -hmm. I'm getting the heavy blaster name correct? I believe that is correct. Uh, it looks like an MG-42. I am absolutely or certain that is what its base was for the film. 42 or a 34? One of the two. I think it's a 42. Yeah. It's the one you're uh, so, talking about. Yeah. But, uh, yep. And then, of course, the name Stormtroopers. Right. <laughs> right in there. But, uh... I think the ones I'm, some of the ones I'm really excited to see and uh, sort of get to paint are the Scarif Troopers mm. from uh, Rogue One. Yeah. From the beaches. Those guys will be fun. Yeah. Some more, uh, some nice sort of variety of, of color coloration across the, the armor. Oh, yeah. Different panels. But, yeah, I think Stormtroopers are very definitely one where that great opportunity to batch paint mm -hmm. everything. Nothing Going there. a little little heavier on some of the the black here because this uh, this trooper has a a heavy backpack. Okay, it uh, appears to be carrying a few tools. Okay, so you are you leaving the backpack? White and then the tools are black. Or? Uh, I'm gonna paint uh, this one panel where it looks like there's some. Uh, he's got like some knobs and and lights. Okay. Because I think later on, if uh, we were to go back and hit that with some like some reds or greens, okay, I think it'll stand out a lot nicer. Yep. Uh, and that way, it'll be a nice contrast to just the plain white. Sure. Uh, of the backpack. I think we're we're good with having some contrast there as well. Because let's face it, they are some. Uh, yeah, they are some some pretty miniatures, but just yep. two tones can get kind of boring. <laughs> so we'll, yep. So I think with these, it's all about painting them quickly. But yeah, yeah, they are really nice minis. They're very crisp. The detailing is great. Mm -hmm. But uh, yep. There we go. Of course, the uh, the scout troopers. So we'll be painting later on the uh, speeder bikes are there's a lot more black involved in those. Yeah, they're a little more lightly armored as yep. befits uh, scouts. Yep. They probably could have used a little bit more armor in the movies, <laughs> but well, as as handy. someone who has worn one of the stormtrooper helmets, yeah, I will say that their uh, peripheral vision leaves a little to be desired. <laughs> All right, okay, <laughs> so. Per, perhaps it's not so much armor as it is ability to avoid trees. Ah, okay. That yeah. is uh, <laughs> that is probably the the key factor in their uh, survivability. Yeah. And that's probably also why they are, uh, you know, considerably less armored than their uh, stormtrooper counterparts. Right. Is uh, not just for, uh, you know, scouting and light movement, but probably the weight of the trooper on the speeder bike. Okay. Yep. Would uh, would prohibit him from being too heavy or carrying uh, too, too much armor. Yeah, I also yeah. think because the yeah, scouts, okay. if I recall correctly, like from the movies, they weren't carrying anything uh, heavier than uh, sidearms. Yeah, either. they just had they, the, they just had a simple hand yeah, blaster. Had the pistol. Yeah, very short sort of uh, pistol. Yeah, very compact. And they just had the uh, the weapon on the bike itself. Mm. I remember being a little kid and seeing that movie for the first time and just thinking those speeder bikes were about the coolest things ever. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I had one of the... Uh, I mean, until the trees. Right, and, of course. And then yeah. I went, oh, well, <laughs> I, I should at least wear a helmet then. Yeah. Well, the... Uh, I had one of the the toys. Uh, one, of the, one of the Star Wars figures. Mm -hmm. It was the, the speeder bike. Uh, and my, my favorite part was that so you came in a couple of different pieces. You put it together, and then there was a little, uh, you'd race around with it. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little button at the back you pressed, 
and it flew into different pieces. Oh, no way. Yeah. That's cool. So you can simulate all sorts of crashes. As you're that is amazing. Flying around. But, uh, yeah. But I guess while we're painting stormtroopers, I'm going to have to sort of like, raise a question with you. Mm. Um, I don't know, it's something that, that you've sort of noticed or thought about and that kind of thing. Sure. The, um, it's the, the juxtaposition between mm -hmm. Obi-Wan's line, um, only stormtroopers are so precise, mm -hmm. and then stormtroopers not hitting anybody <laughs> for the rest of the movie. Well, it brings the, you know, it brings <laughs> the paradox of you know, a stormtrooper versus uh, a red shirt. Right. Yeah, the oh, stormtrooper okay. hits nothing, but the red shirt dies anyway. Yeah, it's it's the, the paradox <laughs> of sci-fi. The uh, and I've actually uh, read a theory on why stormtroopers are, uh, you know, supposed to be, uh, you know, or or they are categorically displayed as being terrible shots, yeah, right? Uh, and why the rebels seem to be, you know, marksmen, right? And killing uh, killing them. The uh, I have read that they said it's a, a dehumanization. Factor when you're shooting at stormtroopers, they're just blank masks. You know, okay. you can dehumanize yep. them. They're not really people. You know, in, in right. a military sense, when you're shooting at them. However, uh, when they're shooting back at the rebels, they see faces, and right. they have. You know, it's it's harder to to kill. Okay. So, interesting. That may or may not be the case. No. Well, I just think it was um, important the, for them not to shoot at the not to hit the heroes. Right. Really. Yeah, plot armor story. is pretty thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> plot armor is definitely <laughs> the way, way to describe that one. The sure. um, the, the other uh, the other thing, and and this is my own musing on this subject, is you know they yep. they're originally you know clone troopers, right? And then the cloning facilities were you know destroyed or abandoned or forgotten. Yep. So they made clones of clones. Oh. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever made a you know a copy of a cassette tape and then made a copy of that and then a copy of that. The Never. quality leaves a little to be desired <laughs> after the third or fourth cloning. Right. So yep. maybe they're just uh, you know maybe they're just terrible, right. you know, <laughs> terrible clones. Terrible photocopies. Hey, Drew. Exactly. Drew, it's you, the multiplicity effect. Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Once once you get to that <laughs> fifth clone, <laughs> things get dicey. Right. <laughs> nice. Look at you. That was a uh, Michael Keaton. Is that right? Oh wow! Yep. Yeah, there's there's, there's a blast <laughs> from the past. <laughs> there we go. Johnny's got all the old movies keyed up over there. Excellent. I too have a ton of useless information wrangling or jangling around <laughs> inside my head. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. Right, yeah. So I'm on to painting some bright white. I think one of the things I need to do here with uh, with the white is thin it down a bit. Mm. So we're getting some nice smooth, absolutely sort of finish. Um, yeah, you want to get uh, with white. You want to make sure that you absolutely get some nice thin coats because otherwise it ends up looking too gunky. Yep. And you want like the uh, like the the advertisements from the most recent. Uh, yeah, you know, football event. Right. It's nice and clean. Oh, it's tied. a tie dad. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's funny. What do you mean we're not allowed to say Super Bowl? Ha ha ha. Sorry. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was about the superior birds of prey. Right. It's the superb owl. Superb owl. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Here I'll be go. here all week. <laughs> no. Thankfully. Oh. oh, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, Ow, my pride. That's okay. I'm too used to uh, giving Rick a lot of problems. Can I steal one of your paper towels? Yes, sir. you may. You may. I've got a whole stack here. Oh, delightful. Yep. Thank you kindly. So. Go. So you can start to see here the uh, as I'm painting the the white onto uh, onto that light gray of the uh, the primer coat. I'm getting the some nice contrast. Oh, very nice. Uh, it's 
thin that down a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So if you are going for speed on these, we you can see this is taking a little bit of time, you can just do the, I think you could just do these thin coats on the sort of on the torso and the, uh, mm -hmm. the top of the model. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, go for some of the, the higher edge yep. highlights. And then some sort of thinner, quicker yeah. highlights on the, on the lower half on the legs. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that uh, also keeping the, the legs a little bit darker um, would be you know, something that you would see much more naturally uh, in yep. you know these guys because you know if they're stomping through all kinds of terrain and dirt, it's going to build up on the on the legs. As anyone yep. who has ever owned a brand new pair of white sneakers will tell you, <laughs> they last approximately thirty five minutes yep. before they just look dusty and grungy. Yep. You don't even have to wear them; just take <laughs> right. them out of the, take take them out of the box. box. <laughs> a half hour later, they're just and look at them. They're, they're gray and dingy. <laughs> like ah, darn. One of the things we're going to be, I, I think, uh, a little bit later, we'll be working on the basing for these, and we've we've chosen a to go with a, a desert look, mm. uh, so we can do some sort of desert buildings. We'll Very make cool. Make a couple of those as well. Um, so end up with a sort of a nice dusting of. Sort of desert yellow or sort of sand. Yeah. Sort of colors around the around the legs. That would be yeah. nice. You could uh, get some weathering powders or something yep. in there to make them look uh, nice and dusty. Yeah. I think we might actually just do it with uh, with some paint and dry oh, brushing. Delightful. That works too. Yeah. Just a just a quick sort of thing. That's why I always like to. Uh, to get my basing materials down on the on the base before I start painting the model. Ah, uh, um, so oh, there we go. Yeah, so I like to get the basing material down on the uh, the model. So once I go to sort of the dry brushing stage, dry brushing mm -hmm. the sand, uh, some of that if that some of that goes onto the the legs and the feet. Right. It just ties them. Just ties it in. Ties it in. Exactly. So I think that's going to be quite neat. We're gonna mess around with a few uh, tufts as well, tufts of grass. Ah, from, very nice. Um, from the army painter. Okay. From their collection, just to add a little bit more uh, sort of visual interest there as well. I think that that's something that a lot of people forget when they when they do their miniatures. Yep. Is uh, they treat their bases like an afterthought. Right. And if you you know give consideration to them before you even begin, like what what do I, what's the story? Right. You know, that I'm telling with my army. Where are they? What are they fighting through? You know, what's, yep. uh, you know, because if you're, if you're painting your guys, you know, uh, one way, like, for example, they, if they're in snow, you know, yep. they're, the weathering on the rest of them is going to look far different than if they were in a swamp. Yep, exactly. And, uh, and I think that far too many people just kind of neglect that. Yeah, it, I think they're, it's, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. It's an easy sort of thing to go for a sort of generic basing kind of look. Yeah. But uh, picking picking out a basing look beforehand and knowing knowing the environment you're going to be in can uh, can be really good. Absolutely. And when you're in a situation where you you've got you can choose the colors that you're going to be using. Um, mainly here because we're painting stormtroopers, so they are white and black. Right. <laughs> Our choice is limited. Um, if you know what your basing is going to be, you can choose some colors to, to contrast well with it. Uh, exactly. So well, Dave, let me ask you this. Do you yep. feel like it makes sense to leave the base neutral so that if you want to use the figures for a different campaign in a different setting, it, you, you're not locked into that one scenario or that one setting? Um, yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do that. There are um, there are probably a, sort of a couple of different schemes if you're going to be painting them uh, that will give you that neutral kind of feel. Uh, 
one thing that I've seen people doing a, sort of more and more often is actually rather than using uh, sculptor bases or terrain kind of bases, uh, they use clear acrylic. So the whole army will be based on clear acrylic. So it doesn't matter what you, what table you put it on, you can see the table through the clear acrylic. Um, personally, I like to pick out a, a sort of a terrain yeah. feature. Uh, that may be because we're old school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of always always done it that way. But uh, yeah, I think there, there's some really uh, good opportunities to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to go the sort of width and breadth of the, uh, or the length and breadth of the galaxy far, far away, <laughs> that'd be the, a way to go. I think it's uh, anybody who has a laser cutter can cut out clear acrylic. So if you've got any friends who do that or... I think uh, there's a company called Litco in the US. Uh, they do clear bases. So, yeah, I think uh, it really all comes down to what you want to do with it. Yeah. The tough part, of course, there is if you choose a, a very generic uh, basing or a, a non specific basing, like a clear sort of look, uh, you won't really have the chance to do any sort of fantastic weathering. True. Because um, as soon as you do some weathering, it's going to lock you into something. Okay. There we go. This guy's almost done. <laughs> so you can see here, I'm not actually going. Everything. There's a few panels I still have to go back and mm. paint. But you can start to see it really sort of clearly. Yeah, he's starting to is. starting to pop. Yeah. I love all these ridge lines, the ridge panels on there. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does make it easy to give them definition with uh, with very few colors. Yep. So it actually, you know, this is. This is something that uh, you know even novice painters can get a really professional-looking job yep. uh, on their minis. Exactly. I think lines help as well with like you don't have to make as paint as many brush strokes. That is true. <laughs> things very uh, very quick, which is nice. Uh, okay. So Drew's using his. Uh, his holder there. One thing I'll just show you um, back on mine for a second, Johnny, is you can see on, oh, kind of see, <laughs> yep, on the edge of the barrel here. So I painted that black mm -hmm. uh, and not using a holder has meant that that, before that was dry, it rubbed against my hand. So let's rub that off. So I'll need to go and paint some black back on that. But you've got a pretty nifty holder there. Yeah, um, this is uh, actually one that was crafted for me uh, by a friend. Cool. And uh, he has, he said, why don't you uh, take it on next time you're painting? And uh, if anybody's interested, they could All right. you know, okay. get a hold of one. All right. Or get a hold of me, rather, and I can <laughs> uh, get a hold of him to, to make some. Sure thing. So but, that uh, they can just uh, get a note to you through uh, One Inch Heroes, through the One Inch Heroes Facebook page? Yep. Uh, you can also send me a message on uh, Instagram or... Uh, or through my website. Oh, look at that. Well, so is the, and the website is just oneinchheroes.com. That is correct. Excellent. Very cool. So, yeah, I have found also that, uh, you know, because I, I tend to paint for very long stretches, yep. uh, having a miniature holder uh, relieves a lot of strain on my hand from holding such a tiny, you know, miniature okay. in my hand. Uh, or in this case, I'll be painting you know like a dozen of these guys in one go. Yep. Uh, so just having the holder actually uh, really uh, helps my hand feel a lot better. Okay. Uh, after painting as well, so I don't get like that you know that hard cramp in my hand. All right. Interesting. Yeah. I think I end up holding a lot a lot of my miniatures like this. I think. Mm-hmm. Sort of well, them. Yeah, and that's that's sort of you know the the natural feel of how I yeah. hold them as well. You know, I hold them 
cupped like that. So having this, you know, this nice miniature holder, the, um, yeah. Yeah. the uh, yeah. like that, you know, it fits nicely into my hand and gives that natural cup, yeah. you know, shape to it. So that way I can, uh, you know, I can paint comfortably in a stance that feels natural. Right. And you've got, it's got a cool, I noticed that it doesn't have a flat bottom to it. No, there's actually a, uh, a little base uh, over here that uh, has a, a little cool. dowel on it and it sits like that. So nice, nice. and nice and neat. Uh, yep. So that way when, uh, you know, when I'm done painting or I want to take a break, I could just set it down or if I'm waiting for a wash to dry, right. that sort of thing, I could set it down uh, and not worry about it tipping over or me touching cool. it and messing something up while I'm waiting for it to dry. Oh, that's cool. Very neat. Yeah. That sounds good. It is good. <laughs> yeah, and I know that there are some other, uh, yeah, there are some other options available. Yep. Um, but this one, uh, the, the natural wood uh, just feels really good in my hand, especially after painting for a while. My hands, uh, you know, don't get clammy like against a, like a plastic one. Okay. Wood, so it breathes really nicely. Right. Nice. I know Rick's really been enjoying the, uh, the GW. Mm-hmm. Um, miniature holder. Yeah. But I don't know. So I haven't been grabbed by a miniature holder yet. So... <coughs> For me, hmm. I am almost done with this. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn away from the microphone next time before I blast your ears, Johnny. Ah. All right. So that guy's that guy's pretty much done. I can hit the other the other regular trooper. Yep. With the, with the white. There we go. I know that uh, some people might have uh, seen us using our uh, thumbnails for palettes. So I like to take my brush, and if you take it across your thumbnail and roll it, it helps your brush maintain a nice point. Okay. And then that way you can maintain a lot more control uh, over it. It can help get rid of some excess paint right. on there as well. And that way, from doing that, you don't have to bring it from a palette up. You know, back to where you're painting, so you can right. you can maintain control. Oh, interesting. So, I noticed that you've been doing that, but uh, I do the uh, the brush licking thing. Yeah, I do, people... I I do that too, but generally, you know, once I'm finished painting and they're they're clean. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I've just uh, always been in the habit of it. That keeps that that nice point. I've. I am guilty of it as well, <laughs> but I was trying. I was trying not to do it on on television, right. as it were. Yeah, but <laughs> nah, nah. nobody's tricks watching. Tr Shh, well, hopefully, the trade. Lo hopefully, lots of people are watching and uh, are commenting. But we'll be able to get to those in the and uh, silently judging. Silently judging. Not so silently judging. They'll be vocally judging. They will be very. You guys vocally are terrible. Judging. Uh, Fun. James is watching. <laughs> I th hopefully, Josh is watching as well. Um, Actually, James might not. I think he usually has a later lunch break. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I did notice is that uh, finally, turn our lip. Uh, yeah, there you are. There we go. Just chew that off. Uh, the white really stands out. Mm. But yeah, I think. Um, so and I think it is the tastiest. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think he's uh, almost done. I will uh, actually, I'm just going to grab some dark gray. From the uh, Vallejo model color range for a highlight on his his gun, and just make sure that I yep, highlighted everything back there on the blaster and on his fingers, the gloves there. There we go, and I can just sort of turn the brush on this on its side. Yeah, that's a really uh, that's a really good trick for getting uh, solid edge highlighting. Yeah, is to use the the brush, uh, the brush's own stiffness, yeah. against the angle uh, of the miniature, and then that way it doesn't go over yeah. into the next color, but you get a really nice crisp, clean edge to it. Yep. Exactly. So there we go.
Excellent. Stormtrooper number one for me. You're already out to your number two, aren't you? Maybe. Maybe. Nice. Okay. I need to highlight the uh, the blacks <laughs> on them using a, a dark gray, though. Cool. But yes, I'm very nearly done the uh, the white. Oh, on the second guy. Nice. Yep. I better hurry up. Oh, no, it's up, not a Taylor. race. It's not a race. That's right. Take your time when you're painting. You should have fun with it. Yeah. If you're not having fun, what's the point? Unless it's a speed painting competition. Well, in that case, you know, destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> I can still paint quickly and be having fun. That's true. Yeah. So, let's paint quickly. Fair <laughs> enough. But, uh, no, all good. Does make sense, though. Take, take as much time as you need. Uh, what would be your favorite Stormtrooper moment then from any uh, of the films? Uh, that would probably have to be in A New Hope when uh, the tall Stormtrooper walks through the door and bashes his head <laughs> on camera. It's one of those little bloopers that most people miss, but it's right when, um, right when they come in and the droids are in the control room. Yep. Uh, when the four Stormtroopers come in, the one in the back is, uh, it looks like, the rest of them are probably like, you know, probably like 5'11", 6' foot tall. Right. And this one guy is like 6' foot awkward. And yeah. he must he must be at least like 3 inches taller than the other stormtroopers. And as the door opens, the rest of them walk under it handily. Yep. And then the one trooper in the back just goes, dunk, and catches his head on the door. Um, and it's that's just always one of my favorite stormtrooper moments. And yeah. I know it's silly, and it's only there for a second, but it's just <laughs> it's one of those things where you just have to you watch it and you go, ah, yeah. you know, when you see it. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. The uh, what about you? My, I think one of my favorite things about that one is uh, that it stayed in. Mm -hmm. It stayed in all of the uh, all of well, the cuts. Any changes? So um, it's nice that Lucas can have a little bit of a chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I asked that question without having an answer myself. Oh. I don't know if I have a great storm trip at the moment. I think, I guess, um, after that moment, mm -hmm. cause that probably would be my favorite too. Uh, it might be a, I guess, more a first order trooper moment mm. when, um, in, uh, the Force Awakens. Do you know where I'm going to go with this? <laughs> I think I know exactly the uh, the scene when the uh, the two troopers are walking down the the hallway, and uh, oh. Kylo Ren is having a fit, and they just go no, no and they turn they around and walk back, turn around wordlessly, and just ignore him. <laughs> that was good. No, <laughs> that, that, that was another one of my favorites. I, I always like Star Troopers being comedic because right. you know they're supposed to be like these elite ultra troopers that you know kill everything that moves and isn't them. Yep. You know, and then it, every so often they just go, mm, they're still kind of human, you yep. know? <laughs> yeah, That is cool. That's another good one. I hadn't thought of that one. But, uh, no, the uh, the moment, um, I can't remember the name of the planet, but uh, where they go to the tavern and, well, basically, they're attacked by the First Order. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Finn has the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And... You see him sort of start to advance on a, a stormtrooper, and the stormtrooper just goes, yeah, and pulls out that <laughs> with that like electrified tonfa yeah. kind of weapon, yeah, and just uh, it's like, okay, bring it, yep, we're ready, yeah, traitor, yep, yep, that one. I, I, I think for me it was the that action. Mm. And all of a sudden it's like, it's it's very authoritative, yeah. you yeah. know, like he's. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know if you remember this or not, but there was like a brief period on the internet after that movie came out yep. where that, <clears throat> that Stormtrooper's designation number was TR8R, Traitor. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until like Lucasfilm came back and like, no, he has a name. He has yeah. a name. And it is badass. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I don't remember what that name was. Traitor was better, but... Uh, badass. Badass. <laughs> sort of was. it was... Uh... <laughs> I think it was like TK2199 or something, because in the it, there was a comic or a story that was uh, a part of the 
the the canon, the lead up to that, and okay. his he was uh, part of the same training unit as Finn, and I think his name uh, was Nines. That was like his nickname because his his last two digits of his unit designation were 99. 99. Okay. So I think yeah, I think he was Nines. I I could be correct or I could be mistaken on that. But yeah. I could be. I very well could be. I could be correct. I'm. But. But I. To be fair, I'm. You know, when it comes to Star Wars trivia, I'm. I'm slipping in my old age. <laughs> so. Excellent. I wonder if anybody's going to convert. I'm just thinking of mm. uh, comedic things to do with stormtroopers. I wonder if anybody's going to do some uh, troops action with this. Yeah, that Do you would be. That? The, oh, yeah, that'd be great. The parody. Uh, so, whose droid piece? is that? Oh, you don't know. You're holding it for your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it was a. Uh, yeah. If for those of you not familiar with uh, the ancient internet memes, uh, troops was a, uh, a collection of Star Wars enthusiasts who did a uh, a variation of the stormtroopers on Tatooine yep. that was like cops. And so they went around and uh, when they were called out to uh, Owen and Baru's uh, yep. house for a, a domestic dispute. Yeah. Um, and oh, it was it was just hysterical. It was so funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you get a chance, uh, go go to the the interwebs and check out uh, troops. Troops. That was definitely cool. Oh man, that. That was one of those things that got played over and over and over whenever <laughs> you know you went to a friend's house and you know they yeah. had the internet. Yeah. You know, back in the days before it was a, it was a necessary tool for survival. Yeah. Exactly. Man. Okay. Now underneath the uh, the pauldron here, the command pauldron, you notice that. It's, My, a, uh, it's a soft nougaty center. It is a soft nougaty center. <laughs> um, so the, I guess the way because of the way I primed it, the uh, panel here is a lot darker. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to get some of the my pale gray or light gray. Mm. Sorry from Blaho. Paint back over that. Just because that's from the front, that's fairly, fairly obvious. Right. So I don't want it to be too extreme in the difference. Gotcha. Same sort of thing here. So what I'm saying is, not all of my priming jobs are perfect. Oh, well, few are. <laughs> a few of mine, thanks. Ah, I just meant few in general. Okay. Take that as you will. <laughs> I, mean. I couldn't possibly take it personally. <laughs> I, I feel we're good enough friends at this point. Yeah, that, uh, for sure. <laughs> so there we go. You know, mix in there in between, and make sure that I leave a basically leave a line of that pale gray between the the raised ridge and the rest of the panel there. Mm. Take that depth from there. So that's really all we're doing. It's just. Highlighting pieces of the panel and the ridges to uh, to leave that gray definition in. And just here is and so I'm gonna take some of this good there. dark gray and pick out things like his uh, his gloves okay uh, his, and uh, the the upper portions of his uh, his blaster yep very good I wonder how many people we have uh, watching this at the moment who uh, actually do some Star Wars cosplay I know uh, the the guy I mentioned before who's already uh, hit me up for uh, doing painting work on his set. All right. Yep. Uh, he uh, has a uh, a very very detailed um, Death Trooper uh, cosplay. So he has one okay. of the, the all black from. Uh, yep. Yeah, it, it's well. just it's amazing. Cool. That's awesome. 
friend of mine in Australia recently put together a uh, Stormtrooper costume. Very cool. And uh, But he didn't uh, sort of do it for cosplay purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done it for display purposes. Ah. Uh. So he has a six foot tall <laughs> Stormtrooper in his uh, living room. Very cool. Yeah. The uh, My wife and I had uh, considered doing Mandalorian okay. uh, armor, which are the uh, the bounty hunters that uh, Boba Fett. Yep. Uh, that's his his race. And what's really neat is uh, all of their armor is uh, highly customized and individualized. Right. Uh, so there's no set uniform to being a Mandalorian. So we could basically make them however we wanted. Okay. So is it? But the like the look of. Um, Boba Fett's helmet, for example, mm -hmm. and his sort of yeah, thing. his helmet and armor set are pretty much the the standard. Okay. Um, okay. but uh, but yeah, they have all kinds of uh, various colorations and uh, individual markings. And uh, one of the ones I've seen is um, they had one where they did uh, some very cool tribal sort of markings on the helmet that okay. extended down across the chest plate, oh, uh, which was really cool. Um, and. Uh, as as her devotion to the the Mandalorian cause, my wife actually has the uh, the symbol okay. uh, that he has the um, uh, Mithatar skull okay. that's on uh, Boba Fett's shoulder. My wife has it in the same place on on hers. Oh, cool! That's neat. Yeah. Your wife's a uh, tattoo artist. She, she is indeed. Excellent. Does she do a lot of uh, Star Wars? Does she get to do a lot of Star Wars tattoos? Uh, she has done some. Uh, she's done some. Uh, I've seen some of her flash pieces that she's you know drawn up. They are very yeah. very detailed and very cool. Um, she uh, she's done a lot of uh, very cool you know like nerd culture kind right. of tattoos. Yeah. Uh, in the past several years, which is great because uh, you know being uh, being a geek chic is you know right. cool now. Excellent. Yeah. I asked that because there's a uh, an Instagram account that I follow called Moss Eisley Tattoos. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. No, but I'm gonna be now. Yeah, definitely check it out. <laughs> I follow that too, Dave. Fun. It, yeah. Yeah. It's really good. There's some great work on there. Yeah, they um so Moss Eisley Tattoos. They um basically they go they scour the internet or scour Instagram at least mm -hmm. for uh cool Star Wars thing themed tattoos. Oh, that's cool. And show them and they call out the the artist or they call out the tattoo shop and that sort of thing. Very nice. Um, but yeah, they do lots and lots of fantastic work. Very cool. Okay, okay so uh, almost finished, almost ready to get onto the command pauldron for this guy. But um, one thing I just noticed, you may be sort of holding it up against, looking at it on the screen, is the uh, this ridge line here and sort of the Place where it, the armor meets the uh, the holster mm. doesn't have a lot of definition there. That is true. So, if you find you've got something like that on your model, you can just jump back in. In this case, I'm jumping in with the light gray Vallejo, thinning it down a little bit, not too much though, and just painting that back in roughly along that panel line. And along the edge there, to give a little bit of extra definition. And now I can come back in with a little bit more white. We doing the same thing on uh, my holsters. I'll be using uh, Vallejo's dark sea gray. Dark sea gray. Does that have a little bit more sort of blue or green? Not particularly. Mm -hmm. um, it just. Uh, I think it's uh, designed to look more like the um, the paint on a uh, like a warship. Okay. So okay. it's uh, it's definitely a uh, it's definitely a, a military looking gray. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Just kind of come in with a very thin thin line of it down. Yep. Down the holster. Cool. So. Switch there. There we go. Yeah. Show us the holster there. Yeah. So now, as you can see, uh, right there, the um, uh, 
uh, under the the holster where yeah, it connects to the leg has a uh, just spin it around there. There we go. Uh, as you can see now, it's yeah. got like that dark definition between the uh, the leg holster of yep. his uh, you know standard blaster and the leg armor. So there's a little bit of definition there. And with that uh, that sea gray, it's a it's a different color than the white and the black and the the primer. Yep. So you're getting a little bit more you know color interest a little bit more in depth. the piece. Yeah, that looks great. And I think I'm going to hit some of that over his uh, that like hexagonal uh, left knee yep. pattern that he has there. Okay. So yeah, I get a little bit of get a little bit of definition on that. I'll even hit right where his uh, thigh plate meets the uh, the cod piece. Right. In there, so it's a a little bit of definition as well. Cool. Well, that's looking good. I think I've. Almost got this guy done. I've just got that uh, command pauldron to get onto. Oh, already? And I'm he's looking very nice. Thank you. And pull out. A, well, he's looking white and black. Well, yeah, that could still look very nice. Crisp as well. It's yeah? it's it's yeah. classic. I mean, they have you know, <laughs> black and white balls. You know, so yeah. you know you dress up fancy. Yeah. I think sure. the next time they do that, I'm just going to, uh, and I have to attend one, I'm going to wear a Stormtrooper outfit that and just, like just put a bow tie on. That's perfect. <laughs> I, I think that would just be, that would totally be appropriate, right? Reach over there for a second. Throw that on the spinner. Very nice. But, uh, yeah, I think we're almost almost out of time. Uh, we've got about two or three minutes left. So... Alrighty. If we can be quick. So that's, uh, that's mine. You can see how much white there is. Mm -hmm. Loads of it. Looking very nice. And it spins around, <laughs> looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, what we might do as well is see if you can throw up your mini on there. Just yeah, switch it over. Thing. Oh, touch ups. Yeah, I just had to touch up that, that <laughs> brow. But here, I'll switch switch out for okay. My uh, switch out for my my heavy trooper. As he comes around with that big old cannon. Yep. There we go. Looking good. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with them. Fairly straightforward stuff with the uh, the stormtroopers today, uh, but that's no real surprise. <laughs> no, everybody was expecting white and black. Right. Uh, <laughs> I predict. No so, surprises here. Yeah. So I think uh, we're probably going to wrap it up there. Um, I will say thank you very much for coming in, Drew. Thank you very much we for really having appreciate me. Appreciate it. Uh, so, Always a pleasure. Yeah. Definitely cool. We'll have you in uh, again before too long. Uh, hopefully painting something that isn't white. <laughs> um, it, it would be nice to get a little variety. Some variety. In my guest spots. We'll bring, we'll bring you some variety. <laughs> It'll be cool. But, uh, I mean, on, on the plus side, I'm getting very good at painting it. So <laughs> There we go. Practice makes perfect, right? Yes, indeed. Excellent. That's good. Very cool. So uh, if you want to check out uh, any of Drew's other work, uh, you can find him on Facebook, under One Inch Heroes, mm -hmm. Instagram. One Inch Heroes. Yep. Instagram, Twitter, and uh, the website, all the same name, One Inch Heroes and OneInchHeroes.com. Excellent. Very cool. Uh, so we've been painting uh, Stormtroopers from the upcoming Star Wars Legion. This has been a pre-recorded episode, uh, so we didn't get to talk to people live, which is always fun to do in the chat. Uh, people can always just pretend that they're time travelers. This is true. That'd be awesome. They're watching us from the past. <laughs> Uh, and I think uh, next up, uh, from when this when this airs, Rick and I are going to be painting a few more stormtroopers. Oh, right. Uh, we might tackle the uh, scout trooper and the speeder bike. Oh, we'll very cool. Goes. Uh, and maybe do some work on basing as well to show you what we're we've got planned for that. Very cool. Uh, but yep. So Star Wars Legion is coming very soon to your friendly local game store. Uh, so head along, uh, put your pre-orders down. Uh, Get sorted. Start talking to people in the store about what you're going to be doing with Star Wars Legion. Uh, I think uh, Fantasy Flight Games just recently announced their um, what they're doing for organized play. Mm. Uh, it's going to be loads and loads of stuff going on uh, in your local store. So get down there, join the community, uh, and have a lot of fun. I think it's going to be great. Yes, indeed. So I've been Dave. I've been Drew. And we'll see you at the game store.
Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.